this video, I want to walk you through the journey of .NET Core. .NET Core is probably the biggest change that the .NET language has encountered. In 2002, Microsoft introduced Web Forms, which was a revolution at that time. Web Forms has its drawbacks, and there was a need to overcome all of them. Because of that, the .NET team came up with a new architecture, which was .NET MVC. Now, even though I love MVC, and I have built many applications in MVC, it had its flaws, like it was created on top of the components for web forms. Because of that, it was tied to IIS and ultimately Windows operating system. But with the evolution of web development, Microsoft had to keep up with the changing technology. Finally, in June of 2016, Microsoft released ASP.NET Core, and it was the first version. Now, .NET Core is built on top of the new .NET Core framework. It is completely rewritten, and it is a cross-platform version, hence it is not tied with Windows. Also, .NET Core was built with cloud in mind, so it is extremely robust with that. Then, in August of 2018, Microsoft released .NET Core 2, and the team has been active with releasing new versions. There was a big change from .NET 2.1 to 2.2 because we had to update quite a few class libraries and there were few challenges. But since then, .NET Core team has been releasing new versions with 3, 3.1, and .NET 5, which was released in November of 2020. After that, there is .NET 6, which will be released in November of 2021. We will be using the preview version, but whatever we learn will be the same once .NET 6 is released. So this is a small overview of all the .NET frameworks and their evolution. That being said, why should one use .NET Core as compared to the classic .NET? .NET Core comes with many advantages. First one is ASP.NET Core is fast and open source. If you compare that to the traditional .NET applications, there have been quite a few benchmarks and it is very fast when you compare that to web forms or even .NET MVC. .NET Core is also cross-platform. The classic .NET was tied to IIS and Windows, but since the .NET Core is rewritten, it has removed that dependency with .NET Core. We also have a built-in support for dependency injection, which saves a lot of time and it is extremely helpful. Once you get used with using dependency injection, you cannot imagine your application without that. With any programming language, it is critical that the new updates or the new version that are released, they should be easily upgradable. And that is one of the features with .NET Core. When a new version is released, updating to that new version does not have groundbreaking changes. Because of that, you can always keep up with the new versions. .NET Core is also cloud-friendly. When the .NET Core was being written, cloud architecture was kept in mind, and because of that, it is completely compatible with all of the cloud components. And lastly, when it comes to performance, .NET Core exceeds all of the previous versions, and even the new versions in .NET Core that are being released, they supersede the previous version. The code actually gets more optimized that results into improved performance. The ASP.NET Core compiler will eventually optimize the entire code whenever the code is recomposed using the .NET Core framework. .NET Core's actual performance is multiple times than any of the framework's previous implementation. Because of that, it is clear that Microsoft has a long-term plan with .NET Core technology. So with that brief overview, let's continue our learning in the next video.